Hello, my name is Deborah Vigil. I am the Administrative Services Director for the Administrative Services Department. The Administrative Services Department is made up of several divisions. Those divisions include Human Resources, Communications, and Human Services. Each division plays an important role in the department's mission of striving to provide excellent services for the city's employees and citizens. Within our department, we have the Human Resources Division, which includes Amanda Bossard, our HR analyst, and myself um, as the head of the HR department or division. We also have the communications program, which includes public information. Joan Pliego is our communications manager, and, jo and Gail Falkins is our communications assistant. Our management analyst, Carson Hornsby, um, his, a lot of his position is providing analytics assistance for city department projects. Carson and I also are the liaisons to the Human Services Advisory Committee. We help the Advisory Committee with the Human Services initiatives and the funding allocations. Our HR analyst, Amanda Mandy Bossard, oversees the Civil Services Program and administers that in conjunction with the Police and Fire Departments. You'll see that we've provided an organization chart and at the top you will see that the Administrative Services Director is the head of the department. Um, I directly supervise and oversee the Human Resources Analyst, the Communications Manager, the Management Analyst, and our Communications Manager directly oversees our Communications Assistant position. Contact information is provided below for each of our staff members in the Administrative Services Department. It's at this time, at this point in time, it's easiest to contact us via email, so those email addresses have been provided for you. Following will be presentations by staff within the Administrative Services Department for the various divisions and programs. We hope you enjoy learning more about our department and our programs. Thank you. Hello everyone. This next section of the Virtual Citizens Academy is dedicated to human services. My name is Carson Hornsby and I'm one of the staff liaisons to the Human Services Advisory Committee and the other staff liaison is my supervisor, Deborah Vigil. The City Council liaison is Jim Mayhew and the Advisory Committee members are Ann Logelin, Carol Peterson, and Sarah Weisel. The City of Snoqualmie does not employ human or social services staff, so in order to meet those needs in the community, they contract with organizations and nonprofits to meet those needs. The Human Services Advisory Committee helps us with a strategic plan to identify which organizations will fund and helps provide ongoing oversight of those organizations to make sure that they're meeting the services outlined in their scope of work. In the 2019-2020 biennial budget, the committee identified the fun following funding priorities. 40% going towards food to eat and a roof overhead, 30% for supporting and preparing youth for success, 15% towards a safe haven from violence and abuse, and the remaining 15% goes towards physical and mental wellness, as well as healthy aging. For the 2019-2020 biennial budget, the City of Snoqualmie is funding 15 different human services organizations with funding ranging from $1,500 to $44,000. In 2019, the City allocated $225,000 and in 2020, the City has allocated $232,000 towards human services. In order to receive human services funding, an organization has to fill out an application for the city. Within that application, we ask for the purpose of their funding request, a description and information about their organization, the supporting partnerships that they already have in the community, the results of past human services funding, if applicable, accessibility of their services, 
the cost of their programs and a, an intended scope of work that's edited throughout the application process. The s supporting documents are uh, proof of nonprofit status, financial statements, and a list of their board of directors. After the committee has received all of the applications, they, the applications are evaluated using the funding scorecard during a, an advisory committee meeting. Within that scorecard, there are 10 different categories that the committee looks at um, in order to evaluate the application. Those sections are the completeness of the application, which funding priority is covered by the organization, their standing in the community, their clientele, the uniqueness of their services, the cost of their programs, the results, the accessibility of their programs, past funding if they've been given any by the city, and the inclusivity of their services. The max score of an application is 100 points and organizations that have higher scores are prioritized over those that receive low, lower scores. If an organization is given human services funding, they're required to report back to the city every six months using the accountability form. In the accountability form, the organization has to identify how they have met the scope of work in the, the past six month period. They have to identify the percentage of funds that went towards Snoqualmie residents, um, we also ask them to identify if they've received other support or funding sources as a result of our support. They, the organizations identify a personal client story to identify how the funds have touched individual lives as opposed to seeing overall statistics and numbers. And then they are also given a section to provide any more information that they think uh, the city should know about. There are 15 different organizations that the city is funding in this biennial budget, and there's a ton of different things going on in the community that uh, the city is really proud of. So I'll give a brief overview of each of the organizations and then what we're helping them fund. CarePoint Clinic is a clinic that provides free health care, and the city is funding a soundproof exam room, insurance, and a clinic phone. Eastside Baby Corner uh, provides different supplies and things children need, and we're helping them with clothing, diapers, and supply donations. Encompass is an organization that is dedicated to children and family programs, and we are funding early learning, pediatric therapy, and family enrichment programs. Friends of Youth offers youth support and development initiatives, and we're funding programs including their youth shelter, counseling, and education services. LifeWire is dedicated to ending domestic violence, and we're helping them with support and resources for individuals affected by that violence. Mama's Hands is an organization that provides support to individuals in crisis, and we're helping them by funding their House of Hope for Women and Children. Mount Sai Senior Center offers senior programming and recreation, and we are funding social health, fitness, and education programs. SciView Community Foundation is dedicated to youth programs, parks, and recreational facilities, and we are funding Learn to Swim scholarships for children. St. Vincent de Paul offers individualized support for those in need, and the city is funding individualized assistance, including housing, food, and clothing. Snoqualmie Valley Community Network is dedicated to promoting and inspiring youth to lead successful lives, and we're helping them by funding youth and family development programming. The Snoqualmie Valley Food Bank provides food and resources to the community, and we're helping them by funding food donations as well as their summer meal program. The Snoqualmie Valley Indoor Playground offers an indoor place for children to play, and the city funds play mats and a rolling storage cart. Snoqualmie Valley Shelter Services offers a shelter and support for the homeless, and the city is funding the winter shelter, job and housing assistance, and other services such as shower and toiletries, as well as internet access. The Trail Youth is dedicated to mentorship and resources for youth, and the city funds a youth programming, including a coffee house and podcast team. And lastly, Two Rivers School is a big picture school that offers individualized learning plans, and the city funds a mental and behavioral health therapist for students that is on site.
those are all the organizations that the city of Snoqualmie is funding in the the 2019-2020 biennial budget and if you'd like any more information feel free to contact me my name is Carson and my email and phone number is on screen thank you Thank you for tuning into this presentation about the City of Snoqualmie Communications Program. I'm Joan Pliego and this is Gail Fulkins and we are the communications team. Communication is key to city government. We share news and information to residents, businesses, community organizations, and visitors to our beautiful city. It's important to inform the public about available city services, programs they may find interesting, and fun events such as festivals and movies in the park. We use many forms of communications to share city business such as city council actions, economic development projects, and department projects that impact residents and businesses. One of the ways we get information out to the community is through news releases to local media, a weekly e-newsletter to a subscriber list, a quarterly print newsletter, Another source is the city website. It's very robust and you can find information about parks and trails, stay up on development projects, look at the city calendar, sign up for Notify Me, uh, register for the Alert King County system, and even pay your water utility bill online. The city is active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to share news, events, and images of our beautiful community. Print resources include the water report, flyers, and a map of area trails and businesses. Video and photography also tell a story and convey information for our residents. Public safety information is one of the most important elements of the communications program. We promote public safety, including emergency preparedness, and we alert residents of actions they should take during disasters such as floods and snowstorms. As certified public information officers, we inform the media through news releases and on-camera television interviews about significant news. Our goal is to anticipate these needs and be fully knowledgeable and transparent at all times. In addition to representing the city and anticipating and sharing information, we also work to engage the public in a variety of ways, from the Citizens Academy to social media to our info emails. Challenges we face include informing those who speak Spanish, Korean, Hindi, and other languages, reaching vulnerable populations and youth, and managing information overload. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope you will stay connected with the city through social media, subscribing to our e-news, and signing up for Alert King County. Feel free to reach out to us at info at snoqualmiewa.gov. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mandy Bossard, HR analyst for the city of Snoqualmie, and I'm here to talk to you today about some of the functions that take place in the human resources department at the city. There are some things that we do in human resources that are legal compliant, must happen issues, and that's a big bulk of our work. But depending on the size and complexity of an organization, there are a lot of programs that we're in charge of. Today I'm going to cover some of the basic areas that govern our people resources at the city. With that, I have a graphic for you on the screen that's going to serve as a loose roadmap for what we'll talk about today. We're going to start with legal compliance. Legal compliance governs almost everything we do in human resources. As you can see from the scrolling list on the screen, there is no shortage of laws that we need to obey. That's basically what legal compliance is, is obeying the law to the benefit of the employee and the organization. It's to make sure that the employee isn't subject to illegal or negligent behavior and the organization is not accused of doing the same. Understanding existing employment law is only part of what we do in human resources. 
there is constantly new laws being amended or added to the books at both the city, county, federal, and state level. In addition to regulatory agencies, it's also important that we keep track of important rulings from the judicial branch, which help to clarify some of the gray area in how we administer our HR guidelines on a day-to-day -day basis and how the employee is treated before, during, and after they are employed with us. Washington State has seen plenty of changes in employment law in the last few years. We've recently introduced guaranteed paid sick leave to all employees in Washington, as well as a state-run paid family medical leave assistance program. Each employee at the City of Snoqualmie receives, on their first day of employment, a, an employee handbook containing all of our personnel procedures. These are frequently reviewed for legal compliance, as well as changing best practices in the human resources industry. Next up, I'll talk about recruiting, but first I want to touch on recruiting strategy. What I mean by recruiting strategy is the strategy behind who we're going to hire. How much work do we have? Who can do the work? What credentials or skills and background experience is necessary? This thoughtful strategy helps to aid in the overall recruiting program so that we're not always just throwing a body at the problem, that we're being thoughtful about how we do our work and how many workers we need to do the work. Next up, I'll talk about recruiting. The most important piece to any recruiting program is a fair and equitable process. One of the first things that you want to do is brand your company or organization, for example, the city of Snoqualmie, as an employer of choice, a place that people want to go to work. Next step, you'll need to have a good job description with details, including what is required in the position, and as well as some fun items on why a person might want to work at the city. You'll need to advertise that posting in places where employees that you might want to work at the city are going to see it. Cast a wide net so that there's opportunity to filter out folks that won't work through the process and get down to several good contenders by the time you're ready to hire. Next step, you want to make sure that you treat each and every applicant the same from access to the application and how they apply throughout the interview process as well as communication during the recruiting process and after. Part of branding your organization as an employer of choice is also that level of communication through the recruiting process. You may not get the job, but you can still have a great experience interviewing with the city of Snoqualmie. Next up, I want to talk about employee retention. This relates to recruiting because the best recruiting program in the world will do an organization no good if they don't retain their top talent. What makes an employee feel valued is really what retains top talent. The issue is what makes someone feel valued is different for each of us. We're all unique. For one person it might be time off. For another person it might be salary. For another person it might be retirement contributions. What we strive to do here at the city is make sure to empower and educate our supervisors on their role here to get to know each and every one of their employees and find out what their drivers are and what makes them feel valued so that we can retain our top talent. Next up I'm going to talk about compensation. The city regularly gathers data on overall compensation for various nearby cities or competing employers that we try to compete with for the best talent. Part of the HR world is talking in total compensation, not just your salary or how much your benefits cost. Total compensation encompasses all of the various ways that the city contributes to your well-being. This can be your health benefits, your salary, your retirement contributions. It could even be the professional development opportunities that are offered to you. Some of these may not be as important to one person as they are to another, but we're trying to compare the total package at any given time. These comparisons are often done prior to a collective bargaining agreement negotiation or just when we're trying to make a change in hiring strategy or in our workforce. That brings me to the end of my presentation today. I've listed for you here on the screen 
our contacts in the HR department, Administrative Services Director Deborah Vigil and myself, Mandy Bossard, HR Analyst. If you have any questions about anything I've discussed today or just want more information, please feel free to reach out with this contact information provided. Thank you for watching.